Hello everyone. I just thought with the weather being so absolutely pants recently that I would do a short video. I'm starting to do some prep now for my hire tackle. I've been tying up bait traces for wrecking for the last couple of weeks, just on my evenings. Um, so I thought what I could do, maybe to give everybody a head start who's not used them before, uh, either coming for the first time or wonders what they should be using, I can just show you what I use. And I, exactly the same as I said when I did the uptiding video, I am not the world's expert. All I talk about is what we do on sea urchin, what I've found works well. Um, and that's so it's not to say that this is the only way to fish wrecks and these are the rigs that you have to use. These are just the ones that I find to be the best. Simple, strong, not many components is the way to go in my mind. When you're fishing the wrecks, you are going to lose gear. I've seen people lose, you know, up to 15 sets of gear in a day. That's extreme. But some days, I, I would say on average most days, you're likely to lose five or six at least. Um, it just, it's the nature of wrecking. The wrecks have got snags and, you know, they're, they're very, very chewy, some more than others. So, yes, you've got to come and be prepared to lose gear. So when you come to lose gear, there is absolutely no point in putting loads of unnecessary things on. So I don't put any extra swivels, extra booms, anything like that. The rigs consist of a piece of £100 monofilament, a standoff loop from that monofilament, which I tie in. I'll show you how to do that. And on that standoff loop goes a 5-inch Muppet of one of four colours, which is what I prefer to use, and two hooks, a circle hook and an O'Shaughnessy hook, and that is it. You put your lead on, drop it over the side, and there is nothing then to worry about. Am I fishing the right rigs or not? They catch fish. Last year, the the rigs that I used for my higher tackle, and this isn't to try and be derogatory to anybody but I've seen people who've been fishing for a long long time fishing with some I think I would say unbalanced gear to be fair quite often fishing 40 pound monofilament which is absolutely fine maybe for uptiding out on the wrecks you need to be more robust you know you're going to be catching ling all the time and when the ling are around ling have really sharp teeth and if you get a big ling it will rub through 40 pound line and if you know if, if you hook it in the bottom of the mouth or you know so the line is going to run out through the teeth by the time you get it up you know we'll be fishing in 50 to 70 meters of water by the time you get that fish up to the top well the chances are you probably won't because it'll rub th the teeth will rub through that mono because it's too thin so that's why we use 100 pound you can use 150 if you choose but i would say 100 we didn't look well last year in the hundreds of rigs that we used i had none of them rubbed through on Ling's teeth so I'm comfortable using a hundred pound at Whitby in the situations that we find ourselves so that's what I would recommend to you a hundred pound and then the hook size is a circle hook which is a 7-0 and on the bottom an O'Shaughnessy hook which is an 8-0 so big hooks along with a five inch Muppet but this is the trace line this is a hundred pound Sakuma Supercast I do have some 150 which I'll use if I'm going to be anchoring the wrecks in the chance of really trying to extract something really big but we're fine for most of the cod fishing especially the 100 pound more than ample because it would be doubled up on your standoff loop. Okay so I keep saying that I'm an advocate of using the minimum amount of gear that I can get away with and this is really my bait traces consist of a muppet, two hooks, and a piece of the supercast. That's it. No swivels and whistles and bells, booms or anything like that. Just it keeps it simple. You're going to lose gear in the wreck, so why waste money? There's four different coloured muppets that I use, as you can see there: orange, black, red and yellow, and loomy. And we always used to say it was loomy for ling, orange for cod. Red and yellow if you're unsure, and I put black into the armoury for this year because I personally caught a lot of fish on black ones last year. 
that was when the water wasn't quite so clear there's a little bit of color to it uh, the black ones really did stand out so I've added them to the armory for the bait traces hook size so the circle hook which is the top hook that you can see there the circle hook is a size 7 -0 and the O'Shaughnessy hook at the bottom is an 8 -0. Big hooks and strong hooks. They're really good pattern. They're, you know, they're nice and sharp. Really, really good hooks. I'm just very, very comfortable and very, very confident with them. All my bait traces last year were tied up with these particular brand of hooks. I've not changed. And we had one hook open, and that was when a shark um, took a bait. So... You know they're not designed for shark fishing but they've landed you know we had cod over 20 pound we had ling to 20 pound and they were more than up to the task of landing those fish so strong gear that's it this is the line that we use uh the sakuma supercast and the way that i measure it is i literally there i use that much as far as my arms go apart a hundred pound monofilament, if you use scissors, it can be a little bit of a struggle. I've found that it's far, far better to use a set of pliers. And I use the cutting edge of the pliers to do all the trimming. So, so that's cut that off the spool. And then all I do is take my hands to the end of the piece of mono. And then when I've got my arms apart, so I find the middle and then slide and slide that's going to create the loop which is going to be the standoff loop that your your muppets and hooks are going to go on so there you go you see that there so i make it quite a you know about a foot in size altogether um, in old money about a foot in size this loop and then the knot which i will do a close-up of okay so i'm going to show you how to tie the knot for the standoff blood loop i've got some uh, some dark coloured braid so hopefully it should stand out a little bit better for you. So firstly we need to make the blood loop, or we make the loop in the line. So we've got one tag end and two tag ends and the two that are hanging down that is your loop that you're going to tie the knot with. So what you need to do is get this this one here, okay, you're going to pass him over the top of this tag end, okay. So you pass that over and then you get hold of your tag end line here. So this tag end and you create, can you see that? You create your own loop in it. And this loop you then twist forwards once. I'm going to do it twice but for the £100 mono I would definitely recommend that you do it three times. I'm only doing it twice because otherwise I don't think this braid will tighten up. All you, you've got to make sure you keep, you can see the twists on that side and there's twists on that side. And you in the middle, you've got the, the, the hole that you've created. What you do then is you pass the loop itself through there. So we'll try and do that now. If you're with me okay and then I don't know how this is going to bunch together because it's not fishing line but you then just pull the knot together yeah actually that's come come okay that the main thing to take from this is you can see there's only two coils each side there would be three on an ordinary rig but the main thing is you can see that the standoff blood loop comes out of the middle of the knot if it doesn't come out of the middle of the knot then you haven't quite got it right you need to retie it. It's a difficult one to tie slowly. I've tied thousands of these knots, so I just, it's second nature to me. So it's taken me a while to slow things down to try and show you how to do it. But you'll know when you've got it right because it looks just like that. But all that's left for me to do now is to just actually put the components on. As I've said before, I really do like to keep things as simple as I can. So all that go so you know the entire rig consists of a piece of 100 pound monofilament, two hooks, and a muppet. Okay, so the muppet goes on first. So I'm just 
grab my little scissors. The one thing with the Muppets is you just need to nip the end off to open them up. Like so. So now that's opened, we just push him straight onto the standoff loop, thread him down. Next on goes your circle hook. I always push it through the front. So he goes on. And lastly, the O'Shaughnessy. And then just push him back through. And do you know what? That's it. You're done. You know, you, you three bits on it and a piece of line. And that will catch you stacks of fish. It really will catch you stacks of fish. I put a black Muppet on in particular um, to remind me to talk about the colours. So I use Lumi, I use orange, I use red and yellow. And last year I started using black Muppets. When the water wasn't looking particularly clean, it was a little bit dirty, uh, one of the colours that really does stand out is black, believe it or not. Uh, so black accounted for me personally quite a lot of fish. So I've incorporated those into my higher gear. So you'll see these for the, for the people who are going to come on board who are going to use my kit. You'll get some. You'll see some of the traces that you'll get. I'll have black muppets on. And some days it doesn't seem to make any difference, but some days it really, really does. So yeah, and that's it. That's the rig complete. I just store them all, store them all in these bags, just wind them on, and then when I take them out before I put them onto the rod itself, I'll just stretch them out. And then, I mean, obviously I have higher gear on board, so throughout the winter when it's quiet, I will literally, I think at the moment I've got about 300 tied up, ready for this year's fishing when we get back out on the wrecks. So, there's another one to add to the collection. And they really, really are that simple to do. Once you've done sort of 10 or a dozen and mastered doing that standoff loop knot, you will find that, why did I ever bother buying rigs? Because, you know, you're, it's so much cheaper. Hopefully some of the things that I've shown you might be of some use, if not, that's absolutely fine but if somebody takes something from it and it gets them a few extra fish then I'll class it as being successful. I've watched through some of the things that I've put down this afternoon on the video and there's a couple of things that I didn't mention which I think I should really. The main one being is why do we go for that kind of a, a rig for wreck fishing? The main reason that we go for a short standoff boom is because of the nature of the fishing and how the wrecks are. So you've got, if you can picture the scene at the, you know, down at the bottom of the seabed, we drift across the wrecks. We don't anchor them, we drift across them. So we will stop at one side of the wreck into the tide and then the tide will push us and we run right the way over the wreck. When we're doing that, we are going to hit the wreck and then bounce through it and then come across the other side. So to make the best possible use of the tackle, what we need to do is use something that's not going to get caught up. So if you think about a long flowing trace, uh, multiple hook baits, then all these things are going to catch the wreck or they're going to catch the line that's already caught on the wreck, for example. So that's why we use only one standoff boom. I see people using two and three, but what you've got to remember is if you're using two or three, then you're using an additional two or three hooks, or you know, you're using an additional two hooks and a muppet on a standoff boom. So that's why I just go with one. And through experience and watching people on board sea urchin who are fishing with multiple booms, what I tend to see is. I don't know, probably at least 90% of the fish that get caught, if it's a single, get caught on the bottom hook, whether they're fishing two or three. The bottom hook seems to be the one. And that lends itself back to everything that I keep banging on about. With bait fishing, you want to keep your bait on the bottom as still as you can for as long as you can. So that's why we use that style of rig. And 
I only feel the urge to use one and I catch plenty with it. And I see my anglers on higher tackle catch plenty with it as well. So that's the reason why we go for that short, to minimise the amount of times that you're going to catch the wreck. It's going to save you money because you've only got to put two hooks and a muppet on and you're still going to be fishing really effectively. So I thought I just wanted to clear that up because I was like, it didn't come across too well in what I was trying to show you before. Like I said, hopefully it might have helped some people out, but if you do turn up on sea urchin to fish with your own gear and you do find that you're struggling a little bit, if I have always got like a hundred rigs on board, if you need to use my gear, you're more than welcome to use it. Thanks for watching.